Hello and welcome to The Rob Burgess Show. I am, of course, your host, Rob Burgess. On this, our 183rd episode, our guest is John Robertson. John Robertson is an English slash language arts teacher at a local high school. He's been teaching for seven years. He brings his passion for gaming, videography slash photography, and racing into the classroom whenever he can in an attempt to make school as fun for himself and the students as possible. And now on to the show. Hey, thank you so much for uh, coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Cool. Um, we're uh, we just go. I don't know if you know that, but <laughs> we just go on this podcast. There's no there's no setup. As soon as we ro- we're rolling, we're rolling. Is that are you are you good? I am a okay. We're cool. good to go. Cool, cool. Um, we'll go ahead and tell people who you are for people who don't know you. Okay, my name is John Robertson. I am an English language arts teacher at Tipton High School. Uh, I've been teaching for about eight years. I also am the esports director, tech integration specialist, uh, pretty much whatever they need, I do it. And then I do a couple of stuff on the side, a couple of things on the side, like the uh, 90s podcast with Chap, and uh, just always looking to have a good time. Absolutely. Well, I should say for anyone that hasn't heard it yet, it's like I said, my favorite podcast. I was on it. I hope I did good. Do I do good? You did great. Of course. Cool. Excellent. You brought a great perspective into TGIF from the 90s. Yeah. Oh, TGIF. Absolutely. For those, I mean, if you don't know what we're talking about, check out Chap and Teach Take Me Back to the 90s. Honestly, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it more as this podcast mm-hmm. goes on, but uh, mm-hmm. it's just a fun little, it's supposed to be a fun little hour. It always ends up turning into a fun little hour and a half. Absolutely. Well, it just flew by. I couldn't believe it was over by the time it was over. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody always says. Absolutely. Well, cool. Um, well, just tell me how you were. You, I don't know much about your origin story. What's if you were a superhero? What would the comic book say? <laughs> oh my goodness, I don't even know. Uh, when were you when were you bitten by the radioactive spider? <laughs> it depends who you ask. Some people tell you that I'm, I'm the villain, not the hero of the story. Oh, no. it, it just depends who you're talking to. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Tipton. I grew up in Central Indiana uh, with both my parents, and they were both very conservative christian uh family and i it was very i mean i'm happy for the for the upbringing they gave me and everything like they gave me a lot of of values that i still carry but uh you know i grew up in a, an almost all white small town in indiana and then i i finally at 21 went away for a little while and explored the world and uh, i found my way back here um but it's i mean i, I think i bring something to the area having a, a broader perspective of the world but uh, that's kind of my origin story, man. I, I came back. I came back just because, growing up, I hated this town and thought it was awful. And then, and then having been gone for so long, I realized, you know, there's a there's a charm to small town life. I think that happens no matter where you grow up, though. Even people that live in what you would consider idyllic circumstances, I think feel that way. It's, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think that yeah, everybody kind of falls into that. Sort well, of we all have a little bit of teen angst and we, we rebel mm-hmm. against whatever we know. Sure. Well, you don't have to tell me. I was growing up in uh, Mitchell, Indiana, so uh, in Southern Indiana. Um, I think, well, how many people in Tipton? Uh, last time I checked the census, it was like 5,000 <laughs> in the county, I think. Okay. So, so oh, in the whole uh, county. Goodness. Wow. I, I think it's count. I don't really remember it. I just know that we're right around the 5,000 number in our okay. area. That may be the town. Gotcha. Yeah. I think Mitchell was about half that. So how many people were in your graduating class in high school? Uh, I think we were right at around 200 back then. Okay. I guess I was probably half as big as, as yours then for school wise, but, uh, anyhow, yeah, no, I, I, uh, what I told you, I was, I was listening to your podcast. I definitely related to your, uh, take on things a lot, maybe because, uh, my, my, maybe not to the same degree. I mean, you obviously told me about going to church multiple times a week and I didn't do that so much, but, uh, you know, I did, I was a counselor to, uh, Episcopalian summer camp and I went to church pretty much every Sunday growing up and my parents were very strict about what I did and did not, uh, intake, uh, into my mind, my, my fragile, fragile mind. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, like I would say I was sheltered for, for quite a while. 
Um, but you seem I, to have listening to your show though. You seem to have found ways to like get around it. You were you just like bold about being like, I don't care. I'm gonna like do this anyway. And I'm just gonna hide it from you. Like, wh- how did you? Because I, I I think my parents were like no, and I was like okay <laughs> for a while. <laughs> uh, I think it helped that I was the younger of two boys. Okay, uh, I was my, the older one. I don't yeah. know. Maybe that's the difference. I, I think. I mean, I think that's a big part of it. My brother would push the boundaries, and he would bring stuff home and sneak it in, and I would get exposed to it. And then at mm-hmm. that point, my mom would kind of be like, "Okay, it didn't." <laughs> I mean, right. So it, it it came with some advantages being the younger child. Okay, well that makes sense. But um, you sound like you got some things from having an older presence in your life that uh, older brother that oh, are, sure. had paved the way in certain ways uh, little, where you it, really didn't have to. It had some <laughs> pros and cons. I mean, he definitely, <laughs> you know, helped me get uh, uh, my hands on some things, but he also, you know, wised mom and dad up to some stuff. He got in some trouble uh-huh. and they were double extra hard on me because of it. But, you know, that's just, you play the hand you're given, right? That's absolutely. Well, um, I also think it's interesting because you are, like you said, you're involved in in esports and and you're uh, obviously very into video games. I've heard your uh, arcade game episode that was interesting. Yes. But um, what's your what's your history with video games and how did you get that past your your parents? Because no, I feel actually, like... uh, no the video games actually came from my dad. Um, oh, really? Wow. Well, okay, so well, he was into them. Well, uh, for a while, when I was real little, my dad had an Atari 2600. Uh, okay. He he worked at Delphi Delco up in Kokomo. Okay. It was Delco at the time. So he's always been an engineer, electrical engineer, and he's technology driven. Uh, he he had me programming on like a on a TRS-80 computer when I was like four or five years old. Like so, I've been in, around it a lot. Um, he had an Atari 2600 and he would play space invaders with us all the time. And dad would just go for ever and ever on every life. And then he would, and then I would be like four years old. I'd, I'd, I'd maybe shoot a ship or two and die. And like, so it was just this awful experience, but like at the same time I loved it cause I was bonding with my dad. Um, but like that got me started. I was like, one day I'm going to be able to beat my dad at video games. And <clears throat> when then after a while, like he, he obviously didn't have the time to invest in it because he, you know, was working and doing other things. So I was a, a kid, kept playing and playing. And I just, I fell in love with them. Uh, I, and then when Nintendo came out, I was still in love with them. And like, it's just always been part of who I am. But uh, they weren't on that whole like. I mean, maybe this was before like Columbine, before people really got upset. Oh no, Columbine <laughs> happened my senior year of high school. So. Okay, I, I think I was uh, junior. Uh, wait, uh, senior year. What year was that? Ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Okay, yeah, never mind. That makes sense. Because I think I was a freshman. Yeah, I had to be a freshman. Anyhow, yeah. No, uh, video games really didn't have any of the bad stereotypes at the time, really, other mm. than, like, it'll melt your brain. Like, there was no super violent things that people were being upset about. Um, really? I thought people were upset about Doom. Uh, like, Doom, the, Doom, Doom, I yeah, guess, is true. But we, I didn't do a lot of PC gaming mm. until much later. I was all, all console um I, I honestly my first P- gaming pc was within the last five years uh i've always been a console gamer up until a couple mm. of years ago but um yeah. mortal Kombat. okay mortal Kombat was one where my parents didn't really approve of it but they were kind of like <laughs> at that point ladders out of the head <laughs> yeah like i think i mentioned this on the podcast about the arcades like we rented they rented the arcade for me for my birthday like my 12th or 13th birthday and i remember showing my dad how to tear somebody's head off with sub zero <laughs> and he just the disapproving look on his face. I can still see it right now. I mean, he wasn't super mad about it, but he wasn't thrilled either. Well, that's interesting. But, um, sounds like you got in on the ground floor, at least with systems. I, I also had a hand me down Atari, uh, somehow. So I had uh, pong and the space invaders and, and all that stuff. So what was, right was your favorite that. Atari game? That's my, that's an important question. Ooh, I think space invaders is probably my favorite one. What about you? I like Space Invaders. Uh, I mean, I would probably for nostalgia's sake, I would have to say there's Space Invaders. But the, uh, I have we, to look at a at a at a list here. I never got a chance to play that. You mentioned it briefly on the podcast, but the um, ET one. Oh yeah, it's no, terrible. I mean, I, no, no, I take that back. I had, I think I had like a an emulator at some point, and I think I might have played it then but no i never never played it on the actual thing but it's i know so it's buried bad. in the landfill yeah. <laughs> yeah uh i like the empire strikes back game we had mm. that where you flew around and tried to shoot down the the walkers mm. but 
Yeah. Oh, one of my favorite memories. For, like, this is kind of silly and kind of gross, but the first time I laughed myself until I actually peed myself, my brother and I were playing Circus Atari. And like we found out that if you hit the like the guy would go in the air, hit a balloon, and then land head first on the ground. Then if you hit the reset button on the Atari at just the right moment, like it looked like he fell through the ground, like because it would just put him right back. Right. And like you know, I'm five years old, so it was just hilarious to us. And we did it like 30 times in a row. And I couldn't. I ended up peeing myself right on the living room floor. And <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing to tell the story, but I mean, it's it's funny. Yeah. And it's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, Hold on, was Mario Brothers originally on the Atari? Uh, the original Mario Brothers, but not Super Mario Brothers. Oh, no, this was the original. Okay, this is where you were looking down on... Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The one with the pipes and the, the oh, turtle yeah. and the crabs. Gotcha, of course. Well, this was on the original Nintendo, but how weird was Mario Super Mario Brothers 2? That was a weird game. It was super weird. I mean, it was it was based on. I mean, you can if you start talking about video games, man, I'm gonna give you history that you don't even want. Um, no. <laughs> Mario Two was actually they needed a game so fast they took a game from a different developer that was based off Persian culture and they just mar- reskinned it as Mario Brothers and that's why it's so different from every other game. It's uh, bizarre. It's, I think it's called I like played it Doki as a kid Doki and Panic. Like, yeah, it's like uh, Gremlins Two is to Gremlins One. Yeah, <laughs> not even the same thing. Um. But yeah, yeah. No, let's see. What else did I like? Uh, I don't know. I didn't really care for Centipede. That game was hard. Um, Pac-Man? Did you like Pac-Man? I like Pac-Man a lot. The Atari Port is not very good, but it's still Pac-Man. Have you seen the documentary King of Kong? Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Pong was kind of, eh. It was a bit pretty basic, but that was like the first video game ever, right? Or the first big one. It's the first one that they like put out there really for people to play. It was the first coin-based one. Right. But I had, moving on to the original Nintendo, oh, I man. loved Super Mario Bros. 3 so much. It was, I, I know this, no, I know those levels like the back of my hand. I, I have, uh, my wife got me one of those, you know, uh, 20 and 1 Nintendo things like, for Christmas a couple years back. And I was like, I could play this blind. I don't even need to look at look at it. <laughs> Mario three was really like a really good platformer. Like I honestly think it's like one of the best balanced and most entertaining platformers because it gives you enough to do, but it's not so super simple. But at the same time, it's accessible. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think what else was on the original Nintendo. What was your other favorite original that Super? Uh, uh, oh, NES Classic was different than Super Nintendo, right? Super Nintendo yes, was a different yes. platform. Okay, yes. but that's later on. Sure. Uh, my favorite regular Nintendo games probably would have been... I mean, Mario 3 was good. Mario was good. Uh, Legend of Zelda. Uh, Tetris. Oh. I played a lot of Tetris. Yeah, Tetris was good. Absolutely. I was going to say uh, Mega Man. Oh, Mega Man 2 is my favorite Mega, Mega Man. Yes, Mega Man 2. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Uh, my wife made me a Mega Man quilt that like every block was a, a pixel because she loves mm-hmm. I love Mega Man so much. So, <laughs> who is your favorite uh, level, uh, big boss or whatever? In Mega Man, yeah, uh, Me- Metal Man. Because <laughs> if you go beat hard. if you go beat Metal Man, then you got the metal blades you can shoot in any direction oh, and it, like okay. you can destroy other. It's, yes, yeah. I remember that now. I always liked the Leaf guy. I thought he was interesting. I like the music on his level. Mm. Woodman. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think what else was on the NES Classic Edition. But you had all these. Uh, I had, yeah. For Nintendo, Sega, Genesis. You had uh, Dream. What was it? Dreamcast. Dreamcast. There you go. Yep. If it's a video game console in the last <laughs> whatever, I probably had it. Do you have a P- uh, PS5? Uh, no, I'm waiting. Uh, I mm. used to go get everything on launch day. I used to pre-order and buy them, but I've learned in in my old age that there's never really that many good games at launch anyway. So just wait until the hype is over and get it when it's not. You don't have to fight for it. Here's a question: Are they moving away from cartridge or whatever? Not cartridge. It's not a cartridge anymore. But you is know what I mean. Physical media. Physical, at yes, all? exactly. Are they trying to? Are they trying to pull that fast one on you? Yeah, they're. Tr- I still buy a lot of discs or physical media. I've still but... got VHS tapes stocked under our bed for uh, <laughs> the just... apocalypse. I'm not sure what reason, but I'm never getting rid of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a couple. I got rid of most of them. Um, mm-hmm. But I still kept a few very special ones. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're trying to get rid of physical media. Mm-hmm. 
I don't like and it. And it's got a it's got its pros and cons. I mean, just like everything, there's pros and cons to it, but uh, I personally prefer physical media. I mean, if it's there, I mean, I'm heck, I have how many streaming services do I subscribe to? So it's like I use these like cloud-based things or whatever, but I do like having like there are certain times where it's like, eh, no, you don't. <laughs> we're like, we're kicking that away. And I'm like, right. wait a second. That's I was that's, watching that. <laughs> that's the biggest negative. They can change yeah. things on you. Like, um, but yeah, anymore, even when you go buy a disc, like you come home and it's still like an 80 gig download to make sure you have the whole game or updated and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's absolutely it's getting to the point where you might as well just get the the download version. Now, what PC games do you play? Uh, I've been playing. I mean, I used to play Overwatch a lot, hmm. uh, and uh, I kind of got away from it for a while. Is that <clears> Fortnite? Then... Fortnite's different. Fortnite is totally different. Okay, Overwatch is, is, that, a, is, that, totally... is that a PC game? Fortnite. Fortnite's on PC and console and gotcha. phones. It's on everything. It's okay. terrible. I hate that game. <laughs> like I do. I just absolutely hate that game. Um, Overwatch is like a first person shooter, but like you work in a team to do different stuff. Like only two people on the team are like trying to shoot stuff and some people are healers and some people are t- tanks that protect everybody. So it's, it's a strategy based first person shooter. It's the mm-hmm. only one that we allow in our esports stuff because uh, okay. it's not really realistic. Like you could be a giant gorilla with an electricity gun. You're not like <laughs> trying to shoot human look. I mean, there's some of the human characters, but you know what I mean? Right. So there, I mean, not to jump into this too far, but there are uh, constraints on what you'll put as far as like in your esports league, right? Uh, yeah. Like games. Uh, they're, so they're... What, what are what are your uh, what's your MPAA uh, rules here? <laughs> the I mean, we board. try to keep it at uh, teen, but gotcha. I can't. I, mean, I can't remember. If... The other the other director was gonna do call of duty at one point but then mm-hmm. activision kind of pulled out which i was glad they did but uh, you know i i personally won't implement anything at our school that's anything over t for teen i won't do m for mature games like i i, I tell the kids if your parents will let you play them at home i i support that i play them at home i let my mm-hmm. daughter play some of them and she's only eight but like you know i monitor her it's more about making sure they understand what's happening and being there rather than just like saying no to everything is my perspective but you uh but are when they get to college though there will be oh like absolutely duty yeah Co- call of duty is a thing in college and so is um count is it counter-strike or i i, 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 I you're asking the wrong person <laughs> yeah, yeah counter-strike global offense i don't play it so i don't know much about it but i know mm-hmm. that that's definitely happening in college um so let's. I feel like we've touched on a nerve here. So what? Uh, what don't you like about Fortnite? I want to hear this. I've never played it, so I'm just interested. It's, I just think it's a corny game. It's just the <laughs> the building in Fortnite's what I don't like. It's based. It's it's a battle royale game. Which for those that don't play games, basically it's a hundred people playing at the same time in this map that gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and last one standing wins. Right. It's a format that's existed in multiple games. Um, I can't think of the one uh, I used to play, but there's there's several of them. And Fortnite kind of just took it and they added this thing where you could like build magically, build up walls and stuff around you, and like it turned into a game where you're just like, who can build the bigger fake house and or sniper, mm-hmm. you know? And it just it's like it's silly to me. It's like the game should is I don't know. I don't enjoy it. Kids like it, it's so uh, it's one of those things. Like with everything, I'm like, if it makes you happy and you enjoy it, then I support you liking it. But it's not at all for me. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that's probably good to air on the on the side of, of T for Teen. I mean, no one can yeah. really get that upset at you for that. Let's talk about starting the esports because I'm really interested in that. Of course, I heard of you on uh, Sounding Off uh, a long time ago, of course. Uh, so I do know a little bit about it. For people that don't know what esports is and it's not i mean you're kind of a pioneer i mean when the when the history of esports in central indiana is written i'm sure you'll you'll be uh, mentioned uh, in that um, conversation so. maybe maybe i've kind of stepped back from it somewhat huh. uh just i mean not at my school like i'm still running everything at my school but i kind of stepped back from the from the statewide stuff just for multiple reasons but hmm. part of it was just stressing me out uh, there and, and, and esports, esports is awesome, and I and I don't want to start off on a negative note. Like let's start off on a happy, positive note. I started it because there's a there was a group of kids that I felt like wasn't being served at our schools. Like we have athletics, 
for, for all kinds of kids, but there's a, there's certain groups of students who aren't going to fall into the category of being happy with football or basketball or track or any of the offerings. So what, what do you do to try and encourage them to be excited about coming to school and give them something to feel like they're part of a group? Uh, and that's kind of how esports got started. Like it's been going on at, at a larger level for a long time, but I was like, let's try bringing it to the high school. So mm. uh, that's why I wanted to bring it. And I asked my principal at the time, and he's like, if you can find the money for it, man, go for it. Uh, but he's like, we just don't have the money for it. That's what started my search for grants and just making it happen. And it, it's kind of a crazy ride after that, but uh well, I mean, it's it's something that hadn't been done before, but it is something that, like, I think, I mean, that would have been a welcome addition, I'm sure, to many. I'm sure you would have liked to have had something like that going on oh, at your absolutely. school if that was possible. I don't know if without the internet if this is really possible, but... Oh, um, uh, we try to do some of the matches in person. We haven't this year, oh, obviously. Sure. Uh, this year puts a damper on that, but in the fall, we were doing, like, we were traveling to Kokomo, and we were traveling mm-hmm. to Noblesville, and we were okay. playing in-person matches. I honestly think the in-person matches are better than the online matches. Um hmm. But, uh, you know, it, this whole year has kind of put a damper on that. You can't really do much in person. So that and it's honestly been really hard to play at all because some with schools across the state going virtual or in it or uh, even when they when they go virtual, like if the kids don't have access at home, you can't your team just has to forfeit and it doesn't make a good experience. So it's just been awkward. Yeah, totally. Well, this year's been awkward in general, but um, yeah, that's a really interesting thing that you started, and uh, I just am interested in what the reaction has been from, because I mean, you put the word sports in it, that's going to raise some emotions uh, about people who have an opinion about what sports should and shouldn't be, sure. or, or, or are just used to some whatever they know and, and aren't, sure. aren't ready to hear about something else. Uh, we we originally were going to do ath- uh, do athletic letters for esports, uh, but there were a few coaches that like absolutely hated that idea. They said that if we gave esports letters, that would take away the value of a letter at our school and this and that. And I understand where they're coming from. I think it's a silly argument, but I mean, I understand their point of view. Um, you know, some teachers hated the idea of having video games in school. They're like, we, we're trying to get kids to focus on work all the time. Why are we going to, why are we going to do video games in school? And then I had a few parents that said the same thing. And once they, once they saw the kids actually interacting with each other and saw the team building and doing the same traditional things that you get in a football or a basketball, then they were like, okay, I see the value in this, but it, it took them about a year to really get on board with it. I think uh, the collaborative thing is what trips people up because they have a stereotype in their mind of what weirdo loner gamer kid living in his parents' basement listening to his Marilyn Manson and he's playing his <laughs> Doom right. 3 or whatever. Sure. It's like, that is very uh, much the stereotype. But it's like, uh, you know, these kids, I assume, I haven't, I haven't, uh, been a witness to it but i assume they they're working together they are collaborating they're uh you know built making plans with each other uh you know i'm sure building connections that they wouldn't have had otherwise uh absolutely. that's that all seems positive to me yeah, i don't absolutely. see a problem with that well it's really like i've got so many examples of kids who were i mean with for lack of a better word they were just very socially awkward who mm-hmm. have grown and learned how to interact with each other and Maybe they, if you if you compare them to the average student, maybe they're still a little socially awkward, but the growth they've made is is tremendous. And I've had other teachers say, I saw you know little Jimmy, and he's acting so much more uh, outgoing and positive and not weird as he was his freshman year. And I'm like, well, good. That's one of the things we try to work on. Mm-hmm. So how long has this been going? Uh, so we're in our second second year. Mm. And what what are all the games that is there seasons that oh, you wow. want to on? Yeah, we got Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, which is on the Nintendo Switch, and okay. it's a it's a fighting game with like Nintendo based characters. I see. Uh, that's that's the kind of that plays kind of like tennis. There's singles and doubles matches for points. So they they might be playing individually, but they're working together as a team, to, uh, like a meet. 
And then what else? What else do we play this year? We play, we have racing, which I think is awesome. We're one of the only states that does racing um, because we're Indiana and we have some connections. So that's been really cool. Uh, we put two racing simulators in our school, which is awesome. That's been a real big uh, draw for students just to come see what the lab's all about because everybody wants to come drive fancy cars. Um, Mario Kart? We have Mario Kart, but that's not a, a season of the... Of uh, the gotcha. We did do League of Legends. I don't know if you've ever played League of Legends. Mm-mm. I absolutely hate that game. I think it's stupid, but it's what really it is on the world scale. It's one of the bigger esports, um, but we're not going to do that anymore just because mm-hmm. uh, the developers kind of put some restrictions unless you're playing with their pay-to-play partner. You can't wow. participate, which it is what it is. Um, so they have a lot of so these video. It sounds like from what you're saying, these video game companies have a lot of say in how these things go. Which most is... most of the companies are super supportive. I hmm. would I would say out of all the Seems games, like it's do, a win win for them. I wouldn't see how they'd come down too hard. Right. Well, I agree with you, and that's the argument we've always made to them. But one specific uh, one, League of Legends developer Raya has been like, yeah, we think that, basically they think they're too big to fail, kind of, mm. and and uh, they they're like, well, we're gonna pick our business partner and we're gonna go with somebody that charges schools to play. And for me, that goes against what esports is about. Like, it's all about being accessible to all students, regardless of socioeconomic status. And so I won't play a game where the kids have to pay. I just won't do mm-hmm. it. Um, that's, that's legit. That's good. Good for you. Uh, I mean, really, like, I, I, we don't charge kids to play on the football team. Yes, they have to go buy their shoes and stuff, but... Uh, why should That's we do different. it for why yeah. do we do why do we do it for video games? Like if if we have the equipment and all you have to do is just log in, then why should we charge them? So it that was a non negotiable for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but uh, get you know and and stop me if I'm treading in uh, on any toes here. But uh, <laughs> how has like the I- IHSAA responded to your uh, uh, existence? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I reached out to him two years ago and was taught. I was like, look, if you want to work together on this, I'm happy to work with you. Otherwise, uh-huh. I'll develop something outside of you guys. And they're like, we, they were interested, kind of, but like they didn't really want to touch it at the time. And last I talked to them a year ago, they weren't interested. I think it'll change possibly in the near future. It really just depends how many schools get involved. I think if there's enough schools involved, they'll, they'll try to get in on it. Uh, but until that player base or that, foundation is built they don't want to they don't know what they're doing so they don't know how to Mm. and i say that respectfully like i mean it's not it's it's okay to admit you don't know what you're doing with something and they they're like we don't understand it we don't know how to to do it so we we're not going to touch it right now but if i were them and i'm not but if i were uh, i would at least recognize that this is something that is not going to be less prevalent in the future so it may make sense to get on board now while it's still germinating you know that was always my argument i was like that was always the argument that i made i was like it's going to grow i don't see video games becoming less a part of society i don't either (laughs) i don't either i I really don't i kind of wonder with just the landscape of high school esports if it will ever really take off in high schools really yeah i used to i used to be like it's it's going to be huge it's always going to be a thing uh but but there's just so many people, and this is not just Indiana. This is like across the nation. There's so many people. It's like wild, wild west. They're all jockeying for position. They're all infighting and trying to figure out who's going to be in charge and make the choices. And what, that like, until there's some unification and people start like working together and stop trying to be the guy and just like get it done. There's like they're just. It's not going to grow as fast as it should. Hmm. Interesting. See, yeah, I don't, I don't know. From a total outsider's perspective, it just seems inevitable to me. I, I just sure. see, I see the technology getting better and better. Um, kids are always into these video games. I barely understand. They're like doing this dance, and there's like a <laughs> right the Fortnite dances. Yeah, because I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. It's like I'm all of a sudden the guy, and you know, you get off my lawn. Guy. Well, I'll be honest with you. You're about two years behind. Fortnite's actually pretty much died down. No one. Oh, really, for real? Okay, yeah, nobody really I'm plays it. Behind the thing that's behind. Okay. Yeah, that's like, now, Fortnite. Like, kind of, it was popular about two and a half, three years ago, and then then it kind of went to just middle school age, and now like they're not even. The the that's one of the the struggles with esports is the 
you got to decide what games are going to stick around and what games are going to be playing because the landscape changes so fast. Like, I'm sure you heard of Among Us not that long ago. Like, uh, mm-hmm. no, what's that? Uh, Among Us is this little social game where you're on a spaceship and, like, one of you is the imposter, the murderer, and you have tasks to go do, but the, the imposter is trying to stop everybody and kill the people. And oh. then you have to have meetings and, like, figure out who's the imposter. Uh, it's like that movie, The Thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it was really it was super popular for a few months, uh, and people are still playing it, but it's already starting to drop off. Like, uh-huh. AO, AOC did a stream with a really popular Twitch streamer to to talk about it, and right uh-huh. before the election time, like it's it's huge, or it was. But I what mean, was it, the, what was the other one? People were Animal Animal Farm? Crossing. Animal Crossing it was an Animal Farm. Animal Farm is <laughs> a great novel. I highly it recommend is. that to everyone. I've, I've read it at least three times for school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Animal Crossing is a real social game too. Like honestly, there's no real win to that game. It's just build an island and okay. and collect stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, my daughter and I play it together on the Switch. It's really fun. Like, uh, it's not it's, an eSport. It's, 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 sorry to, to interrupt, but is Switch oh. cool? I've been thinking about. Oh that. yeah, absolutely. And especially you have what three kids? Yeah. Yeah, you need a Switch. <laughs> The thing about the Switch is, like, there are some competitive games, like Smash Brothers is a strong, uh, mm-hmm. seriously competitive game. But there, a lot of the games are very much just you can sit down and play them and enjoy them. Nintendo's always been a company that's about just making fun. They mm-hmm. all, they just want to have fun. Uh, they're not like hardcore serious games. They're just fun. Uh, like, I mean, you could play Zelda, which is like really long and difficult, but a lot of their stuff is just silly entertaining stuff that you can play with multiple people mm-hmm. now were you, were you uh in i mean you had to have been the pokemon yeah i was big into pokemon when i which is silly i was it came out like in america when i was like in high school so i bought a game boy color my senior year of high school and i was playing pokemon as when i was at work <laughs> like i was working at a at a restaurant as a server and when it was dead i would sit in a booth and play pokemon but <laughs> i i still appreciate the characters and i love the story but i haven't played it much lately but like the mobile thing where people were like walking mm. into traffic yeah when that first came out in 2016 <laughs> oh my gosh i downloaded it that day and it was so life i mean not life changing but it was that was such a cultural moment right it was. Like, like everyone was playing like you just walk around the mall like i lived in noblesville at the time and i was uh-huh. walking around hamilton town center and you saw everyone of every age walking around looking at their phone and you knew what they were doing <laughs> And it was it was just cool because you could just be like, look at them and the nod because you knew you guys were doing the exact same thing. And people were helping each other. And I was like, hey, I found Pikachu over there by you know the gap. And uh, and they were like, awesome, thanks. I've been trying to catch him. Uh, that was I wish that was a happy time in life. Like as as bad as COVID has been for everybody, like the on the 180 of that, like Pokemon <clears throat> Go released in 2016 was like the happiest. It's, it's the first time in a, like i don't know 30 years that i felt like people were just happy to talk and smile and like socialize with each other like total strangers it was you, you know it was really really great it was hmm. that's a good point yeah i never i never played it but i did see people like right. running shoeless through my backyard once during that like sure trying to try to get to it i'm like what are you doing like, yeah like it was wild it was it was really fun mm-hmm Definitely. Um, well, that's an interesting point. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't really play many. Are there any other big like mobile games? Right now, I mean, yeah. uh, Among Us, like I said, was pretty popular. Yeah. Look, I don't play a ton of mobile games. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife has and daughter play a Harry Potter one. I don't know hmm. w- what it is or anything <laughs> about it. I've never read Harry Harry Potter, so I don't. <laughs> Right. I'm not into, it. but like I'm sure there are some, but like the landscape of mobile games changes so fast. Mm. Yeah, totally. Oh, uh, I can't leave the video game topic without asking you: Have you played Katamari Damase? Is that the one where you're you're a big ball of trash and you roll around and pick up more trash? That's a very very reductive way of describing that game, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually played it. I've seen videos of oh, it. Oh man. It's like uh, meditation or something. It's amazing. <laughs> well, that's the great thing about if you find the right game, right? Like yeah, Tetris, you're right. Yeah. I, Tetris, I can just zone out, and that's my relaxation. Like I know mm-hmm. to some people that it's a anxiety nightmare, but to me, Tetris is just 
Yeah, zone out flow state yeah and i think a good soundtrack to a video game helps too oh of course yeah definitely well the uh what is that eight bit sound or whatever that they had to make all the music out of <laughs> uh i mean yeah you can still find like like for regular nintendo is eight bit and 16 bit oh, wow. on super nintendo but nice uh you can still find classic video game stuff online and download it as like mp3 files Oh, nice. And, and there's even a style of music now called chip tunes where they, they use that type of music where they use the music processors from those systems and then they add like electric guitars and drums and stuff to it. <laughs> and it's honestly some pretty decent stuff. Yeah. If, if you've seen the show, what's that one show uh, on ABC where it's like the kid back in the, the Goldbergs? Have you ever watched the Goldbergs? I don't think so. Okay. Well, if you ever see the show, the Goldbergs, they have a chip tunes song for their, for their theme song. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think you would I, probably I like the Goldbergs. Actually, it's about this yeah. kid who goes like living in the '80s. It's all set in the '80s, and this kid uh-huh. goes around and this videotapes his family all the time. <laughs> and he funny. tells the stories. It's really good. It's like we talked about sitcoms on on the '90s podcast, but that's one sitcom that I think has been pretty successful recently. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, we may as well get into it. Uh, your '90s podcast, so cool. Yeah. Why did yeah. you decide to do this? <laughs> Man, I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> People are so uptight and so stressed out and, you know, myself included, we're all just stressed out at the world. I was like uh, thinking about what can we do to make people happy uh, and make myself happy and just have uh, a good time. And Chap and I both have, uh, Chap from Sounding Off, we both wanted to get NBA Jam, the arcade machine when they came out. (laughs) <laughs> so we did and i was like okay so chaps into 90s stuff and i was just sitting there one day i was like i just want to talk about all the things that are awesome about the 90s uh so we we started making a list of topics that we could possibly talk about and that and then the topics kept expanding expanding and i was like let's just let's just make this happen so we started talking about it back in august and then we met uh at five guys and like did all this whole bunch of notes and talked about how we're going to do it and then we recorded our first episode in September, and it's been so much fun. Like, it really is. Like, it's just our little escape from the real world for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Um, I've always said I would travel back in time to the 90s if I could pick any decade uh, that I had been alive in. I might have might have picked the 60s maybe if I could have done any one, but I don't know. There were some messed up things that happened then too. But, sure, sure. Um, no, no time is perfect, of course, but I just felt like the problems in the 90s were so, I don't know, they weren't really problems and like... Well, they weren't the news, for us. The, yeah, well, no, exactly. Yeah, for the people involved, they were they were big problems, I'm sure. But like, uh, like OJ and like uh, the Lewinsky thing and like all that stuff. Like it was just it just consumed everything. And I, I just it just seems like, of course it did because what else was there? There was nothing really. Ha- everything was kind of good, you know. <laughs> so right? of course things like that are going to be the headline every day. The question I always pose when we have this conversation or when I talk to someone about the '90s though is. Uh, were things really that much different or is it we just have so much more access to what's happening now? Like That's a good point, too. I don't think people were meant to know as much uh, about what's happening in different areas of the world that they have nothing to do with that than they do now. And I say that as a journalist. Like, I think, I think there's too much information now. It's like people, when Abraham Lincoln got assassinated, didn't find out for like two weeks, like – in Indiana, you know what I mean? Like it right. took that word that long to, to get back to the, the middle West or whatever. <laughs> well, and, I, uh, and I'm, a, I'm a big user of social media. I like social media, but at yeah. the same time, like, you know, social media has changed the landscape of things. It's given anybody that wants to put their opinion and their voice out there an mm-hmm. opportunity to do so. And so you have that bombarding you all the time. So I don't necessarily think that the nineties were like so much better. Hmm. It's just that we didn't, I mean, for me it was because I was a kid, so like I didn't yeah, know you're everything. Yeah, a kid. <laughs> but uh, it's okay to romanticize your youth, right? <laughs> right. But at the same time, like I think you know, we just didn't know about everything, and like I don't yeah, know, sure, pe- there was probably some really messed up stuff happening that we were. I'm sure. Really <laughs> I'm sure there was. But it just seems like the general, like uh, I don't know, it didn't seem like uh, I don't know. I'm I'm inter- you, you obviously know I'm interested in politics and stuff, but sure, it's kind of exhausting to think about politics this much and i even i even take some you know uh i get a kick out of thinking about it for the most part but just this much like I, there would be days 
when I was like, even when George W. Bush was president, I wouldn't think about him every single day. Like, <laughs> well, growing up in a house where my father was very involved uh-huh. and interested. Well, he watched uh, cable news back in, in the 90s. I mean, CNN uh-huh. was really like it came around in the 80s. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember watching CNN when like baby Jessica fell down the well. I don't know if you oh, know. Yeah, that was, oh, I remember that one. Sure. I remember that being a big deal. And so was my, my dad was watching cable news and politics all the time. So I was always around it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've heard about it a ton of my whole life. So I completely understand what you're saying, but uh, I think everybody, like, I feel like our society can't get away from it now, which no, is almost, which is almost scary. Yeah. It's like when uh, you don't have Facebook, do you? I absolutely do not have Facebook. That's good. For, good for you. I'm glad Thank you. I would do the same thing if I could. I have to, I have a habit for work purposes. Really. I had, I was required to have Facebook account for a college course once. And I told them I would make a fake name, Facebook account for that class. And I will re- delete it afterwards. And I did. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. the way to do it. Um, do you have Instagram? I do, but I barely use it. Ah, okay. Okay. I'm just I saying mean, they own than Instagram too. So. <laughs> I know they do. I I have it, but I have only reason I have that is some of my former students when I taught uh, at Avon ah, Middle School okay. years it. ago. Like my first gotcha. year of teaching was in Avon Middle School, and they asked me to get it when I left so they could like stay in touch with me. So I did. Oh, that's okay. Well, that's cool. That's understandable. They've all graduated and gone to college. That's so weird to see them now. Like it's. Uh... <laughs> uh, but anyway, what I was gonna say is Facebook being the oh. devil that it is. Uh, yep. It shows me like i don't it's like it's like pages i don't follow and it'll show me people i'm friends with who commented on the pages i don't even know if they follow it they just decided to comment on it and it's showing up in my feed and it's like i don't need to see the thing that they wrote under that and it's none of my business what they think about this random article from this random website they probably didn't even read you know right? it's like no, i, I don't need to know like yeah. like seriously i was happier not knowing what everybody thought about everything. Honestly. Have you watched the social dilemma on Netflix? Uh, uh-uh. I, I, I think I know, uh, the premise though, because I think I've heard, uh, Tristan Harris, I think is one of the people that's involved in it. Uh, I've heard it inter- him interviewed, but I, uh, anyway, go on with what you're no, saying. No, I was just gonna say, I highly recommend watching it. Like uh, yeah, what you're saying is, is an algorithm basically where they want to get you engaged. Like they're trying to suck yeah. you into all this stuff. Right. So that's why I've just, I mean, I'm on Twitter all the time. Like, I, it's obvious. Oh, me too. Yeah. So, but I, I'm I can't. I'm not at all like preaching social media bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, you have to be able to understand and, and decipher and, and know how to use it, and you have to be able to break away from it sometimes. Uh, yeah. You've got to be able to just put it down when when you find yourself being exhausted by it. Oh, absolutely. Um, I can't. But can you imagine? I can imagine what it would have been like during the Bill Clinton times. I mean, oh, with and Twitter. Oh my gosh. Yes, it oh. would have been. In, it would Facebook and Twitter, if that existed in the nineties, would have been insane. Like there would have been nonstop <laughs> memes about Monica Lewinsky oh, and uh, and Ken Starr and all his investigations. <laughs> like, I know you're into politics, so I mean, I can throw it out there that I really, I, I see so many parallels sometimes between Bill Clinton and Donald Trump that it just makes me laugh that people's memories are so short. They don't like. Well, Jeffrey Epstein for a start. Hey, oh, <laughs> right, <laughs> sure, absolutely. But but you know when they when they they're both impeached and both let off and not uh, not removed and they both had like both not the most faithful to their wife people. Absolutely, they're both they're both sleazy when it comes to like being humans. Like I'm not even sure. going to talk about I'm not talking about policy. I'm just saying as men, they're not good examples of how to be a man, right? So to me, there's a lot of a lot of parallels but i can't even I, imagine i've met bill clinton twice but <laughs> yeah did you yeah. keep your girlfriend and or daughters far far away from him because i would i didn't have any at the time so okay. <laughs> but uh anyway uh he uh he, i told him i was a journalist and he like walked the other way <laughs> yeah, well, there later you go. On, but they, later on he said i had a good hat when i took my coworker uh george's picture with him so well that's but, nice uh, yeah, it was fine. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, I, I get what you're saying for sure. But um, but I do think that like 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 I'm not into sports, even though I have been on and also listened to uh, Chaps podcast. Right. <laughs> um, but I, I am not into sports, but I think whatever part of my brain would be into sports and has been maybe in my life earlier, like with baseball, when you guys were talking about like the Bash Brothers and the home run race sure. and all that, I was into that. But uh, 
you know, like uh, like now in my current life, what I would be into with sports is is definitely taken up by politics. Oh yeah, uh, that's it's fair. a team sport now. Uh, for see, for what, I I get that, and I and I I'm not I'm not defending that. I'm just no, saying no, that how I agree. It, I agree. I that's understand the algorithm that we've fallen into. I think that we have gotten to the point where politics has become a team sport and oh, everyone yeah. it's it's 100%. just like when you're watching a football game and there's a call that could go either way your brain wants it to go the way of your team right <laughs> and and that's yeah. how people rationalize their political views sometimes and i'm like oh my god would you just be objective about it please uh-huh. but anyway i digress <laughs> no no don't digress <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is we're getting this ain't interesting <laughs> but um so I know, I know you got to be careful because not only do you do a fun '90s podcast where you did, t- you'd have one episode where you talked about current events in one year. Sure, I'm, we're gonna do that again. We're gonna oh, hit cool. all the years eventually. But. That's great. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. But, yeah. um, but I know you try to keep it light. You try to keep it fun. We were all thinking about fun things back then. We want to again. And and I also know that you're a teacher and you have to uh, be polit- You know, after you have to be careful with with what you say as far as you know. I I went to school for elementary education. I was a teacher for a little while and. I know that you're a public person, whether or not you want to be at all times uh, when when you're a teacher. So when you're at the grocery store, you're, you know, you're at work, you know what I mean? Right. In in the eyes of, you know, a student or a parent comes up or whatever. But um, but I don't know, like, what is your what is your general thought about where politics is going? Like, what do we you know, because I was I'm always that's one thing I do like about Twitter. I feel freer on Twitter because it's not mostly people I know. Um, and, and with like Facebook, it's like my kindergarten teacher's going to see this. Do I really want to like, go there? Right, right. No, I get it. Like, I'm pretty sure my kindergarten teacher doesn't follow my Twitter feed. So it's like, who cares? You know, it's like, probably, who, probably not. I Russian, feel like the yeah. people that follow your Twitter feed are probably a specific set of people. And that's fair. Well, that, that is a circumstance of some of the most famous guests I have, have come from certain people that have very specific point of view. Uh, that I'm that I'm partial to because they were a guest on my show. But sure. like, you know what I mean? I I, I have kind of uh, gleaned some followers from some of my more popular guests. I guess you could say. Hey man, you get them, you take them and get them wherever you can. No, I know. I I, I like if you're all all of you listening, I appreciate you so much. <laughs> but I, yeah, I, th- I do think that's how a lot of you found me. Is like because I don't think anybody's searching for me. They'll be like, oh, Martin Shkreli. <laughs> what what podcast was he on? The Farmer Bro. <laughs> oh, he was on this show. Interesting. Okay, now maybe I'll listen. You know, I hope they'll listen. To well, there's anyway. nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, <laughs> if if you found your market and people like it and you enjoy being part of it. And there's I nothing yeah no that's I, wrong I, that. yeah exactly your vibe attracts your tribe so whatever you put out here is what you're gonna get back so Absolutely. No, I, I, I think it's fine I, I enjoy the conversations but that's one thing i'm always like trying to use twitter for is to like get outside my bubble because like i don't know if you'd heard my most recent podcast after the election but uh to summarize i was totally flabbergasted by donald trump's election i just couldn't believe it happened like i didn't think it would actually happen i thought oh is this kind of funny and interesting this is happening you didn't, now. You didn't think it would happen in 2016 no. or you didn't think 16 oh okay out, out to lunch couldn't couldn't and the funny thing is i had a I'd drive from noblesville to kokomo every day and i couldn't have told you what a color clinton yard sign looked like uh right <laughs> so if i just opened my eyes and stopped listening to my uh, npr podcast right. <laughs> i could probably have figured it out well, i have <laughs> lots of i mean i have lots of friends that uh travel a lot i have truck yeah. driver family and like they basically said that you know th- i'm not gonna say they said the election's rigged that is not the point i'm making so please don't don't take that from it. But like they're, they're, they're shocked because they're like, I hadn't seen a Biden sign in I don't know how long. And I was like, well, you're in Indiana. So yeah. A lot of people in cities though, don't get to put it. They don't have yards right. to put signs. In yards. <laughs> so, but anyhow, um, but yeah, but anyway, I was in my bubble is the point. Right. Uh, and I, after that had to like do a lot of soul searching, I guess. Like I just felt like I had my head buried so far in the sand, you know, because I was kind of used to, you know, I was excited about Barack Obama. I thought he could have been better, but I thought he was an exciting candidate. I, I thought he was an exciting president in a lot of ways. He was kind of disappointing in, in many other ways. But uh, for the most part, I thought it was like, we'll just continue with that, I guess. And, oh, I, I guess Hillary Clinton's going to do it now. Whatever. I'm not <laughs> – whatever. Right. Not my first choice, but but sure. It's your, her turn, I guess, is what you're saying. So go ahead. Fine. Yeah, they basically uh, tell you whose turn it is. What's that? Uh, they basically told you it was going to be her turn. 
Yeah, uh, right. Exactly. She she had her number. She had her. She took her number right. and she waited in line, and that was her time. Uh, but do you, then it was do you like, feel like that happened again this year? Yes, I do. Absolutely. And I, I think if not for Hillary, I think Biden probably would have run last time, too, because I do think otherwise it would have been his time. Because be, being the vice president is like usually the jumping sure. off point to, sure. to doing that. And you don't wait four years usually after the last time to jump in. So, so let me just, ask you this. Well, so. <laughs> you're saying you get on Twitter to reach outside of your social yeah. your bubble. And I completely appreciate that. Like, I think that's awesome. I, I think everyone should do that. Mm-hmm. How has that worked out for you? Um, not great. (laughs) Not fantastic. I think it has broadened my mind a little bit, uh, from people like, I think it happens more secondhand. Like I'm like, what are people in your life who feel this way? And not so much all the people who, you know, come at me, you know, like that doesn't, that never seems to work out very well. Cause I always, if I argue with somebody, I always end up regretting it later or deleting it and just like, it's like, forget it. Like, what's the point? Uh, you know, and, and it's like, I, I don't know why I even try to engage sometimes, but like, I'm always, I'm always kind of trying to ask people what people they know, like maybe, maybe their uncle or something they're, they're talking to and they can tell me what he said, but I don't have to hear it directly from the uncle. Maybe that's how many times do you think they're saying, well, my uncle thinks, but they're actually telling you what they think. Right. Exactly. Or, do you think that happens? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I just have their word to go off of, I right. guess. <laughs> I, I know. I just think that's, no, I, I no, think no. it's, I it's think hard to reach outside your bubble. You're right. Like I have, I do have a very specific set of, they've listened to my show and they're into what I do and they obviously agree with most of what I'm saying. So it's like, I have kind of self-selected even on the, in the wild west of Twitter, my, <laughs> a close knit group. So. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there really isn't. I, I think it is important that you do reach out to people of, of different uh, beliefs. Uh, I think that everybody should be able to have those conversations in a, in a civil way. Uh, I, but I think it's a skill we're losing over time. Mm hmm. Uh, it's, uh, I actually try to incorporate it into my English classroom. I'm like, okay, we're going to have a discussion about something and, and it's okay to disagree, but we're going to talk about how to do it civilly and respect others' opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, I stay away from the, the big ones. I stay away from like abortion and, you know, because, well, and the thing about that is like everybody's mind's already made up. Yeah. There, there's no point arguing it. One, your mind's already made up and two, you're not going to change anything. Mm-hmm. So, why argue about it? Let's talk about things that actually affect our daily lives. I mean, well, I get, yeah, where I get tripped up on that kind of stuff, it's like, we're not even using the same words to talk about the same issue. So it's like, you're, you're saying pro-life, you're saying pro-choice, you know, you've got your, that's the framing is right in the same thing you're saying. So you've already set me up, you've set the table for it to come out, however it's going to come out just by saying that, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like defund so, the police. It doesn't mean take away right, all the money. Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I understand that, that that's not what I mean. Like whoever came up with that uh, mm-hmm. phrasing should probably... I don't know. Not have done that. Yeah, like <laughs> I think the phrasing else. is bad. I think you're selling a bad message with that specific phrase. But like, I understand that you know. Yeah, but people are always like, yeah, but it really means it's like, no, sorry, you lost me. If you have to yeah. be like, it really means to say what it that's really a bad means, slogan. You... Yeah. <laughs> Make America great again is a very catchy slogan. I hate it, but it makes sense. I get it. It, it fits on a hat. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. Hold on. I I have feelings about that one just because we already talked about Bill Clinton. He he used "Make America Great Again" in the are 90s. You, are you sure it wasn't Ronald Reagan? Oh, I, I swear I was watching the CNN 90s special hmm. on whatever whatever streaming service it was. I think it was on Netflix, right? So go back and watch the, the 90s. Oh, I, I believe you. I just didn't know that. Oh, I thought no. it was like, well, it blew my mind, right? Because Make America Great Again has turned into this, like, you know, evil phrase to to people. But, like, Bill Clinton said it. And I laughed so hard when I was watching his speech. I was like, oh, my gosh. If, I wonder if people even remember. That's funny. It, uh, anyway, it's it's just one of those funny things. Like it, and uh, Reagan may have said it too. I honestly don't remember. Oh, it, yeah, well, he didn't make it up either. It's been around. For right. A while, I just but. I just thought it was so funny that like you know, as an English teacher and a, and a you know I study words and I studied mm-hmm. like how they evolved over time. Like just knowing the connotation with "Make America Great Again" now and knowing how it was used in the past. Like it's just so almost comical. <laughs> like, like right. I mean, if you take yeah. it out. If, take out the context it's just, it's just words right but yeah. like what it's the meaning it's gained to certain groups like one group embraces it and loves it while the other is like it might as well be a nazi flag mm-hmm. uh just that's interesting to me yeah i guess it just depends on when you think uh 
the again would be <laughs> like when what day right. exactly sure. the, the the again refers to i think Absolutely. it matters a lot <laughs> well i mean if we're gonna talk politics because i mean i know that's your, your thing like we've I'm not, had... hey i'm not trying to get you in trouble and you're no, not you're good you're really good <laughs> i'm gonna i'm just gonna say like we've had conversations and i think you understand my yeah. biggest thing is just be objective yeah like well, I, I get that and i like yeah. that's why i like well, I, mean, I like uh hearing what you have to say because i think your, that's a pretty important place there. to start like i feel like anymore you have to say where you're coming from and like i don't think i come from a place of anything i come from a like like i've never been aligned to a party i've never mm-hmm. registered as a republican or a democrat i've always voted yeah. completely independent and i think every election i've ever voted in i've always voted for at least one person on both parties um uh, like it's just i vote for the person i don't go down party lines but mm-hmm. I just I think that we need people to be objective. I, I can't deal with hypocrisy, and I'm always trying to understand perspective. And that's where I come from politically. So, uh, I just think it's important to get that out there. Mm-hmm. Like so, so there are times where I will defend a conservative side, and there are mm-hmm. times where I'll defend a, a, a the liberal side. I mean, I just don't be a hypocrite. Like the people that are hypocrites are the ones that drive me the most crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's that's fair. I get that. Um, yeah, we had a really good conversation actually that could, that was, could not be broadcast <laughs> sadly. Cause I thought uh, it was actually, uh, it was good. Like if you ever get big enough, I'm serious. That's your Patreon right there. Your, <laughs> your bonus. Oh, the, you know, the after show it's, it, that's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> like, I'll be, like I've had some of the best conversations with people during that. Um, oh yeah. That's fun. And when we had doc walk on there, uh, uh-huh. he, he gave me some really good perspective on like, you know, voting in this election as, as a person of color. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I had some questions that I wanted answered. I mean, I, I didn't, I I wasn't obligated or entitled to my answers, but I I said, if you want to talk to me about this, I appreciate and your perspective and he's happy to give them to me. Like Mm -hmm. I uh, was wrestling who I was going to vote for. I mean, I, and I, I was, I said, how can you as a, as a black person, wrestle with some of the things that Joe Biden said in the past. And like, you know, the fact that Kamala didn't like what he said uh, and was arguing with him on the, mm-hmm. on the, and I was like, can, can you help me rationalize this? And, and he gave me his perspective and I, I appreciated it. And I was like, okay, thank you. That, that helps me. That mm-hmm. helps me grow as a person. So, I mean, it was just one of those, like, obviously, you know, I didn't like want to vote for Donald Trump because I think he's like, we said, he's a slimy person, but uh, like I wrestled with it. I, and I, I needed people to help me understand some things because, you know, at mm-hmm. one point in time, I felt like, and this is one of those things also, I don't mind saying, like, to me, I felt like Joe Biden and Donald Trump both represented kind of the same thing, just one with a worse personality and one was more, more uh, smooth, I guess, even, mm-hmm. though he was, even though he stuttered. They're both like, you know, old white guys that are, have shady uh, things about them that we don't like. They've said some things that we didn't mm-hmm. like and they're, they're all old guard politicians i wanted i wanted pete man i'm happy to say i wanted pete because i liked the guy that could be the smartest person in the room and and stop and think about it when you ask him a question Mm -hmm. that's where i wanted to go that's fair that's fair Uh, um now i i guess the the point and I, I let me just say I appreciate your perspective, and I wouldn't talk to you if I didn't uh, did respect what you have to say. So sure, so. no, you're fine, man. I can have a conversation, and you can disagree <laughs> with me. And I so re- absolutely. But the the only thing I would take issue with with what you said, and I agree, it's hypocrisy. It's it's the <laughs> my my friend Jonathan said that the tagline of the show should be hypocrisy doesn't matter anymore because uh, I think one thing that. John Stewart maybe tricked us into believing is that just showing clips of Fox News and them saying two opposite things was not <laughs> it was it was interesting it felt like you did something but like at the end of the day like right. it doesn't really matter <laughs> like if somebody's going to do something they're going to do something and as long as they win they don't really care if they're a hypocrite or not <laughs> I, I, I agree with that like I think that's so true like I, it's not really the got you that we all think it is, even though that's my first instinct. I'm like, ah, but you said this before. Right. And it's like, yeah, so what do we can, can we get it done? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Were you saying something? <laughs> so, um, but I think, you know, the one thing I would take issue with, with what you said, and this is an issue I have, and I'm not stereotyping you as some sort of like uh undecided voter or uh you know third party voter uh, always of course like you've said you've you voted around you don't have any I've always, yeah, or another. yeah. but i have for... from uh, friends and family members that have voted uh 
let's say I'm not going to say <laughs> I'm attached you to this, but have voted for the Green Party um, and have, have uh, given me uh, argument. I've also interviewed Gary Johnson, the uh, 2012 uh, yeah. candidate for Libertarian. Was he in 2016 as well? He was in 2016 too. Okay, yes, he was. Excellent. I, I, did, I interviewed him in uh, 2012 for the 2012 one. But, right. Um, but but the argument I always hear from that third party wing or the undecided people is like both sides are just as bad. And if you really like and I've heard this from uh, I'm not saying this is where you're coming from, but people on the left wing that that go more for like Green Party, that kind of thing. They're like, well, see, the Democrats, if you vote for them, it, things will never get bad enough and no one will actually demand change. So what we really need to do. We need to kneecap the Democrats so the Republicans can, wow. and then people will realize how messed up things are because things are going to be so terrible. They're going to be screaming for the yeah, Green Party. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm never definitely not on board with that. that to happen. That's never yeah. going to happen. Never in life. <laughs> no, I'm not on board for burning it no, all down. I'm, just I'm not, to not trying to paint you with that uh, no, brush, but, 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 but I think this the thing that it stems from, the, the, the root that I think it shares is the both sides are just as bad as each other. And I think to a degree that can be true on certain issues, but I, I think that at least these four years have shown the, the I think there is a very good reason. Uh, and we've, uh, my listeners will know I've discussed this many times. There was a reason that Donald Trump ran as a Republican and not a Democrat. Yeah, he knew that he would never get away with the things that he said or did. Uh, and he could never, have dominated that party in the same way he has totally dominated the Republican Party. I cannot oh, see him do, doing that. And I, I don't think it's because he has any morals or conviction. He used to be a Democrat. He's changed parties like seven times. Sure. He's been every party there is. I think he was in the Reform Party with Ross Perot at one point. Um, but, um, you know, it, I don't think he has any particular allegiances. But I like I Ross think there's a right. reason. In oh eighth, yeah, he had some interest. I mean, he in was my eighth grade yeah. election. I voted for Ross Perot. <laughs> Interesting. I wasn't. I was nowhere, nowhere near old enough. But um, like I said, I grew up in a house where I had to watch elections all the time, or <laughs> politics all the time. I was like, I like Ross Perot. <laughs> Larry, can I finish? Can I finish? Uh, <laughs> right. But yeah. Anyway, I don't know. What What do you think about that? I mean, do you, Do you see what? Do you see my point at all? I I think I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Right. Like I do, but I also think that this. This polarization, two-party thing, it's not working anymore. Like, every, like no one party is going to represent anyone specifically. Like, I do not fall in line. Like, I do not fall all along party lines on any thing, and I, I don't think anyone does. So, like, the whole concept of one of two people that we give you to choose from is the best person for the job is is asinine. Mm -hmm. that, that whole like, I would much rather have ranked choice voting. With, I agree multiple, with, that. with multiple parties. That is what I would like to see. I think that having two parties like entrenched with their, mm -hmm. with their typical voters, like, you know, that you, you know, you count on your blocks of hardcore religious conservatives mm -hmm. voting Republican and uh, whoever like unions and whatever voting for Democrat. like people, they're not trying, they're, they're, they're playing a game. They're not trying to serve us the best as they possibly can. And if mm -hmm. you, I'm sorry, if you believe that every politician's really trying to serve and represent you, that's laughable in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like I think there are some that do, and I think there are some that are better than others. But our system, as far as just like you know, pick one of these two people, is not ideal. Yeah, I have heard though voting described as taking the bus to the next bus stop and getting out and walking a little bit, you know, it's like you're going in the right direction. It might not be the exact <laughs> person sure, sure. knows but, like, I haven't gotten my way. <laughs> in the last couple like, elections, but. I can't remember the last time I voted for, for someone. Like I think that right, like, right. if you, well, if you pulled a, America and asked them, when's the last time you voted for someone you liked? Like, I mean, probably Obama in 08, mm -hmm. but, but like, I'm always voting against the person I like less. And I think that that's stupid. I think we need that's we need to have the parties need to provide us with people that are actually quality candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's I mean, even thinking back to the 2016 Republican uh, primaries, right? There was like how many different like sort of like the Democrats. This time. Yeah. yeah. And none of them were great. I can't even think of one of them that I I can't think of any of them that I was excited about. 
I dare you talk about Bobby Jindal that way. I don't even remember <laughs> Bobby Jindal. I just <laughs> hand rested and ready. Uh, he, uh, well, he, well, he had Mike Huckabee. Who else did we have? My goodness. <laughs> Art, it was a Ted Cruz. Oh wow! Uh, I, 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 feel like I don't even. Brightest. <laughs> but like, I kept saying like I, I don't know. I kept saying okay, this guy seems okay. But then like as soon as I'd pick somebody that said they seem okay, like that would be the next one to drop off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, there's, there's an example. I mean, I don't mean for this podcast to go, uh, we're already over an hour and I don't mean to, I don't, I don't mean to take up your whole night. I know, I'm, tomorrow's saying, school. Watching, I'm watching football, man. We're fine. All right. Right. <laughs> but, um, I did think, you know, uh, that the democratic party had some pretty strong primary candidate. You mentioned Pete. He's I a like Pete. Candidate. He's, he'll be back. I'm sure. Um, there was, a I, lot of- I, I don't know that he will. I think he no? may get a cap. But I think he's done running for president. What? No. I mean, I I don't want that to like be like a year older than me. Come on, he's not. He, no way. I think. I mean, even even my friends that are like definitely way farther left than I am, uh, and that's not said with judgment. That's just said with like the reality mm-hmm. of it. Like they don't. They they think that he's going to become a lobbyist. Uh, mm. that makes sense. I don't know. I don't. I but I did. I liked Pete. Um, I, I don't remember who else was on. Was on the the Democratic primary, but uh, I thought there was a lot of good people. Yeah, I was I was impressed by the crop of uh, you know so there was some there was some uh, <laughs> forehead like know, slapping moments I, like any any primary, but <laughs> you and your and your listeners are probably Bernie fans. I'm guessing I don't know, but I think he's probably too far out there for the average American. I, I resemble that remark, but yeah. um, that's like, fine. I'm. I mean, I'm just saying, politic, like politically, strategically, like I don't think if you put up Bernie, I think Trump wins again. Really, but I, I think that here, here's my argument for why I think Bernie Sanders would have won both times is that he was different. He was a change. I think he and might have won in 2016. I don't whatever, think he could have won in 2020. Really? That's that's my that's my you know fortune teller reading i think he had a shot in 2016 if they didn't put up hillary uh, i think there was too much out there about him in 2020 and he'd been demonized as such as like a socialist or whatever so you think the socialist thing is too much to get over i think that the average american is going to have a hard time getting past that right that, that, no i get that for sure but i think if you go down and see again if you're explaining you're losing but uh you know it's like if you explain the policies one by one i think people are generally on board with that though right wasn't whole trump's whole thing that he was going to give you a great health care plan cheaper better <laughs> i don't know what trump's whole thing was <laughs> he just might have been saying something <laughs> like the biggest appeal to trump in 2016 was he just he wasn't like a, a lifelong politician i think people were just tired of lifelong politicians like like I don't really like Michael Moore's documentaries and I think that he's kind of a slime ball too, but like I think he had a really good speech about why Donald Trump won before it happened. He was like people were just like, Screw you, we're sick of just mm-hmm. typical, typical politicians, so we're gonna go vote for Trump to give you the middle finger. And I think that's pretty much what happened. I think that's fair. Yeah, that is exactly what happened. And I do think and uh, listen, I, I grew up with a father who was very politically <laughs> interested right. as well. Uh, listened to a lot of Rush Limbaugh in the car oh. uh, growing up. So I, I heard that uh, perspective a lot. But uh, the Clintons, they inspire a lot of unique hate uh, among a certain large group of people. Uh, and I, don't think that's, I don't think that's solely on the Republican side either. I think a lot of Democrats don't like no, them either. No, I wasn't saying oh, that. Uh, on, okay. I'm, I'm saying that's just one part of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, think that, the, yes, people. absolutely. And you're talking about Bernie bros. Heck, no. <laughs> who are you talking to here? Yeah, but right. uh, no, I, I think that the Clintons just seem like the ultimate, you know, they'll – you know, yeah, the Clinton Foundation's a little gross. Of course it is. You know, <laughs> yeah, all that stuff. Like Jeffrey Epstein, like we, like I mentioned. Uh, yeah, you know, there's, yeah, all there's that. There's a lot stuff. of bad about politicians. Let's just be honest. Like, yeah. if you're, if you've been in Washington D.C. or politics your whole life, you're probably done some shady stuff. Yeah, absolutely. We've all seen the wire. Um, but yeah. at least I hope we have. Um. But uh, anyway, well, this has been fun, man. I really have enjoyed this. I can't believe we've already gone for more than an hour. I I, I feel bad I've taken up. It's a school night for you, right? Uh, yeah, we're going back in person for the first time in two weeks tomorrow. Oh, so. gosh. Okay, sorry. I kept you up late. I no, you're t- I don't go to bed till about 1130. I, my daughter's wow. still up. So. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, but yeah. Um, 
Well, hopefully yes. I brought an objective perspective. I mean, no, I, I appreciate it. Like I, I definitely, I don't want, I, it's so weird, right? Like I'm definitely not like a Trumpster. I'm not a MAGA guy, but like I, if I want to defend that position, I feel like I have to say that stuff right up front or people are just gonna, like the whole classifying someone as a racist just because they have voted Republican. That drives me insane. And I think that pushes people away from like common sense stuff sometimes. Well, and, you were ta- talking about Obama. I mean, there's people, a lot of people that voted for Obama that voted for Trump. Yep. Are they racist too? I mean, did they turn into racists? It depends, racist and, it depends who you talk to, I guess. Yeah, right. right. I guess it could happen like, some of those people. But. If I could give anybody like on the left side of the spectrum some advice, just being around and living in Indiana, or being around you know conservatives regularly, like the the cancel culture and all of that stuff is pushing people farther right. It really is. Like just the whole fact that like you know, and I, and I agree with with social policies and on a lot of things, but just seeing people like, Oh, if you automatically do this, we hate you and you're done forever. Like that's pushing people farther. Like they're, they're getting entrenched. So chill on some of that, like try and listen and be objective. I think you'll win more people to your side. I think it is hard too, because like if I, if look, I, I used to say some things I wouldn't say now, I'm sure you did too growing up. in Everyone did. Everyone did. There were there were words that we don't even have to mention that we we once said that thought it was acceptable to say and, and maybe not polite company, but at least among our friends that are you know alone. Just for the record, I've never said the N word in my life. I would. I wasn't even talking about that one. <laughs> okay, I know. I, I, listen, I don't want to get canceled, so I got to put that out there right now. Sure. I've never. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, okay, for the record, okay, that's fine. You put you put it out there. That's good. But I'm just saying, like, there's there's certain ways to talk about it. As soon and as soon as someone tells me, hey, that's not cool, I'm like, sure. I'm usually like, oh, okay. So I'm sorry, I didn't think about it that way. I'll, I'll try to change. That's fine. Yes. I don't I don't have any like. I'm never like the person that's like, wow, how dare you correct me? Like I'm always like, oh, All right, I, fine. I, I didn't think I didn't. It wasn't my experience. I didn't think I have to think about it that way. I'll change. But like, but just to immediately jump down people's throat for it and like be like oh you're, you know it's like right. just give people at least one strike you know at least at least try to for like sure. understand that's all I think. yeah well, i can give you a perfect example if you want to i mean like i know you're trying to to get done you got a family and everything but uh that's like true. i i learned about the whole like gender theory from a student five years ago uh he said he was gender fluid uh, he, he chose pronoun he um, and, but hmm. I told, I told him, I said, I need you to pick one or the other. I can't go back and forth on day to day basis. I don't know what, you know, and some people will probably disagree with that statement, but that's where I was. And he explained the whole concept of gender being different from sex. And that I grew from that and I learned from that. So now like I have no problem with, with my transgender students and I understand where they're coming from. And the, the, the biggest difficulty I've had there is I said, if I had you, your sophomore year, and you were going with your birth gender at the time and then you switch your junior year and I'm still having you in class. Like, don't yell at me if at, well, out of habit, I call you the other one. It's not meant to be a misgendering that, you know, but, but that's a growing and learning thing for me. Like I had no understanding of that concept until a student took the time to explain it to me. Mm-hmm. And I think I appreciate it, honestly. Like, yeah. Oh, definitely. But, but my point is, is if I'm willing to like change, as soon as I know that sure. you know, it's better, like at least like let me mess up once, you know. Well, <laughs> well and that's the thing. The reason that came to mind was was I had a a, a student who was, was uh identified as girl so, sophomore year, uh, male junior year, and like he got so mad when people said her or she or whatever. And I understand, but you can, but at the same time, you can't expect people to change and under and like be able to flip the switch overnight. Like give mm-hmm. like uh, like my whole thing is understand the intent. If the intent is not m- done in a bad mm-hmm. way, give them credit for like trying. Sure. I think as oh, a society, yeah. I think there's so many people that are so quick to get triggered and like be mad rather than understand like you know there are people are not doing it to in a, out out of uh, bad intent. But anyway, <laughs> that's just one of my that's just one of those things. That I think I think that like you know if you understand someone's trying or that they're not doing it out of hate, like give them a break. Mm-hmm. I think that if that happens, I think we'll all come together a lot more because I think that is one of the biggest misconceptions and causes causing a division is like the people are genuinely not trying to be mean and then they get attacked for something and they're like, Whoa, 
Right, right. Well, okay. If if I could speak to like, I think we're talking about cancel culture is kind of what we're we're, sure. we're alluding that's, that's to. Kind of, I mean, yeah. that's that's a that's a catch-all term. I, I understand, but you know what I mean. It's it's kind of the the water that people are swimming is now. And if if I could say anything in in defense of of maybe not that idea, but but kind of the origins of it, I do think that for a very long time a lot of people were not being listened to that should have been listened to. Oh, that's um, fair. And, and women and uh, like you talked about transgender people and, and gay people and, and black people and all these people that were just, when this, when, when it happened, they were dismissed. And then it was like, all of a sudden, Oh my gosh, Harvey Weinstein. Oh my gosh. Uh, all these other things, George Floyd, you know, and all of a sudden people who were not being believed before are suddenly being believed and needed to be believed a long time ago. But I think that that feeling can also go, and too, too far. I think there can be collateral damage from from that too. Yeah, that, and I'm not I, saying I one is that. more important than another, but I do think that there is like a reason that it's so intense, at least right now, is that the the, the, the it, this feels like you know a floodgate is opening in some ways. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's fair. I yeah, mean, I understand, it, I understand what yeah. you're saying. I just I think that people have to to try just step back a little once in a while and understand true intent. I guess is the easiest oh, way yeah. to say it. Absolutely. And once we once we do that, and once we stop being anonymous keyboard warriors and attacking everyone just because we can, like then I think that people will start hopefully to heal up some of the division that has grown in our country. I agree. And stay off of Facebook, people. Just yeah, stay it. off of Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> Twitter sometimes. Twitter sometimes, Facebook not even once. <laughs> how's that? How's those kids? I I I was mind blown to hear that you delivered your own child. <laughs> yeah oh she's doing good she just turned uh seven months uh, uh two days ago so that's awesome like you know i love having a daughter but i mm-hmm. and, and i and I loved holding her and i I was the primary caregiver from zero to one uh because my wife had to keep working and i was finishing up my school wow uh, but uh that's, that's, that's no joke wow no like it, it's like what the irony there is I'd always told my wife, you know, I was going to go to Vegas for a year when we had a child because I didn't really care about <laughs> the zero to one. Like I don't like tiny babies, like they're not my thing. But I mean, it was a great bonding time with my daughter, but um, that I wouldn't want to go through it again. Like I love it. for <laughs> I love it for what it was. And I appreciate the bonding time, but like, there's no way I would ever want to have another toddler, or baby, like a zero to oh. zero. Like I, no way. Toddler, we have, I wish we were toddling. At this yeah. point. Well, infant. She wants infant. to. She wants to run all around right now. <laughs> yeah, it was, and it, ugh. yeah, we we talked about having more kids. I was like, nope, not doing it again. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. One's good. One and done. I see. Yep. Okay, fair enough. Well, I mean, yeah, I get that. Uh, we we may we may have more we may not I'm not sure yet. <laughs> this good one was it was kind of a surprise and in, in so many ways. So. Uh, well, good luck on that. I mean, you know what you're doing now. You can deliver it yourself. So I know, right? I don't you even save those some hospital bills. <laughs> exactly. No, I, it's funny when when I called 911 and the the police came uh, barging in and then the the ambulance or whatever they were like, do you want us to take her? And I was like. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I think there's probably some more work to be done here. Like, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's completely over. I mean, I did what I could. I think I did a good job, but I do think a doctor should be involved now. <laughs> yeah, probably. I guess they have to say that because they can't take you against your will. You know? What I mean? No, that's fair. I'm just no, like, after, I think we're going to want to go to the hospital. <laughs> after having been in a delivery room, there is no way on God's green earth I would ever want to be any part of that. <laughs> I tell that story to my students. Uh, I, I make a very comical version of the day my daughter was born, and it's uh-huh. pretty pretty honest with them. But uh, it's uh, I describe it before I get going. I'm like, it was a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, no, yeah, we've we've been through every every kind of way you can have. <laughs> um, and I've I've seen I've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, oh. it's amazing yeah i have uh i have two daughters so it's it's amazing i never thought i'd have daughters <laughs> this is this is crazy same i didn't think i would either and i absolutely love being a girl dad like i it's absolutely fun. love it like my, i can't imagine my, 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 my toenails are painted right now <laughs> sure that's awesome yeah we do all sorts of stuff like that like <laughs> tea parties board games oh, with unicorns i'm all for it i'm all <laughs> down for the dad stuff that's awesome that's cool that's cool well uh final question before we go always ask this what music have you been listening to lately 
Uh, I've been listening to ska punk. It's probably my favorite go-to. Goldfinger has got a new album coming out next wow. month. I think it's next week, and I love I love them. So I've been getting ready for that. Listening to some Goldfinger. That's interesting. Now, did you ever get into the swing music during the nineties? Oh, you mean like Squirrel Nut Zippers and Cherry Pop and Daddy? Cherry Pop and Daddies and yeah. the Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. <laughs> yeah, I like them. They're cool. Yeah. I mean, if I you're like, doing horns and stuff, you may sure. as well, right? <laughs> I like all kinds of music, man. Like, Me too. I, I like it as long as it's really. good. I don't care. I really don't care. Like, I really have been on kind of a pop punk kick from like the 2000s-ish, but like I, I put Goldfinger in with that category. So, Who else would you put uh, in that? Oh, man. Newfound Glory is on my list. I love Newfound Glory. Um, I mean, Green Day to an extent, their early stuff, I would put in the pop punk genre. Um Jeez, let me look at my iTunes, who I have on here, because I have a whole <laughs> pop punk list. Uh, MXPX, the Ataris. You know, uh, some people put Jimmy Eat World in that category. I don't really know if Too I would. Pop. Too pop, I think. I, I like think... Jimmy Eat World, but I don't I know. do, too. That was the first concert I ever took my daughter to. I took her oh, to see sweet. Jimmy I... Eat World. But... Wait, where? When? It was at, well, I call it Deer Creek. It was <laughs> Conseco or Ruoff or whatever you want to call it, but... Uh... Cool, cool. Yeah, I saw them with Weezer in Illinois when I was in college. But Ooh, Stump 41, Blink-182, those guys. Cool. Now, you mentioned uh, NoFX. Yeah, I love NoFX. Yeah, me too. Uh, have you ever listened to uh, Me First and the Gimme Gimmies? Yeah, but I'm not super huge on them. Oh, they're okay. I think it might be one of my favorite bands. I love them so much. They, they're all covers, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, all hits, yeah. you mean. <laughs> well, they, I like them. I like the, the punk goes pop or pop goes punk yeah. albums. Those are yeah, really those good. Are fun. I still listen to those. So yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I, I it's kind of funny. I never really felt old uh, until I played some music that I like for my students, and they're like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're all rap now. Like pretty much every like I would say ninety percent of my students, it's either rap and then like maybe ten percent country. <clears throat> and that's that it. All right. Yeah, nobody listens to rock anymore. Mm-mm. It's like jazz or oh, <laughs> jug band that. music or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a genre of, of specialty music now. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's my listen to stuff. That's cool, man. Well, I, I appreciate you so much for coming. You should come again. This was fun. Hey, anytime. I can talk about whatever. I'll, if yeah. I don't know, I'll look it up and f- fake it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even make a lesson plan. So. I know. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, when you're on my podcast, like that's how I roll. You, when you were on mine, like I had an outline. That's you're I'm like a good teacher, I bet. I never made lesson plans. I was, uh, I was not very good teaching. <laughs> the first few years, I had to for sure, and now I kind of just go back to what I've been doing. But some days, sure. definitely. Well, have a good one, man. It's been really fun. I'll definitely talk with you anytime you want. Cool. All right. Well, have a good night. I'll talk to you later, man. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.
Join the Rob Burgess Show mailing list. Go to tinyletter.com forward slash the Rob Burgess Show and type in your email address. Then respond to the automatic message. Also, please make sure to comment, follow, like, subscribe, share, rate, and review everywhere the podcast is available, including iTunes, YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Twitter, Internet Archive, TuneIn, RSS, and now Spotify. The official website for the podcast is www.therobburgessshow.com. You can find out more about me by visiting my website, www.thisburgess.com. If you have something to say, record a voice memo on your smartphone and send it to therobburgessshow at gmail.com. Include voice memo in the subject line of the email. Also, if you want to call or text the show for any reason, the number is 317-674-3547. Until next time.